fuck, man. So, I've been up all fucking night for you guys. Yeah. We're going to talk about... This is everything now is requests, you know. So, like turbos, we're talking about that. Superchargers. I mean, is that any good? And why and or why not, you know? So, I've been up all night for you guys. And I've been doing these schematics things, you know, I have a, an entire wall, you know, in my bedroom, just writing away like a lunatic. No, I haven't. I draw a little bit of a chart to show you how the fucking engine works. So, it's no more talking, you know, it's showing shit like the angle fucker that everybody loved, you know. So, uh, Engineer Square, I think it was. So, turbo superchargers. Turbos, they are amazingly efficient and good in every way. You can't really beat that. Take a centrifugal supercharger and you throw that fucker in the bin because that's useless. You know? The more you rev, the more boost you get. You can put the fucking turbo on your car. So, but normal superchargers. We have the um, Roots supercharger and the uh, fucking... So I should prepare when I do this video so I know the fucking names. Is uh, like a screw supercharger. Is that a name in English, really? In Swedish, it is. It's uh, yeah, in Swedish, it is. There are two types of fuck the fucking superchargers. One is more efficient than the other. Uh, doesn't really matter. But what matters is that superchargers. If they are not insanely big and used on top fuel cars, they can't really deliver any boost. You know, most superchargers do one bar. That's like a normal Eaton M62, M90, M112. It's, and, and the nickname for Eaton is Heaton, because uh, if you do 1.05 bars, it's only hot fucking air. But one bar, they're good at one bar. Uh, the other style of similar superchargers that we call screw superchargers um, is more efficient at higher boost. You can do one and a half bars and in some applications you can do two and two and a half. I've actually been in contact with a company in Sweden that makes the superchargers for the Magnuson supercharger kits and a lot more American style supercharger kits. And they promised me pretty good numbers, but yeah, it's like a void warranty thing. But but they tell me that you can use their superchargers at the boost level we need in our diesel engines. I have not tried yet, but some someday I will. The problem with it is it's not really giving us what we want because I, I mean I had long long conversations with this company and they are amazingly good at what they do and they promised me very little boost at low RPM and at higher RPM a little bit more boost and it is the numbers they give me I can do with the turbo and that is taking a little bit away from the from the whole super supercharger thing so maybe we should not boost two and a half bars in a supercharger because we can do that in a turbo therefore i have prepared a little thing for you so an engine is an air pump it's nothing more nothing less it's a pretty bad air pump though because we are um, controlled by the injection pump and the camshafts. So it can't just only be linear like an air pump. My drawing here that you're going to see soon is not 
accurate because the drawing is an air pump that has the same efficiency all the time. However, in the real world, the engine performs better than what I've drawn on this paper. And when I show this, you're going to say, what the fuck? I need that. And when you need that, you tell me, right? So then we can help each other out. It's a deal? Yeah, it's a deal. So, this is an engine. It's a diesel engine. And this engine has in its naturally aspirated form 95 horsepower. With a pump, it has 100. And I revved it a little bit more than stock but I keep it at 100. So this is how my drawing looks like. And we hope the camera can figure this out for us, right? So on this side here, we have boost in bars. One, two, three, and three and a half. On this side, we have the horsepower generated by that boost. And down here, we have our RPM to 6000 RPM, right? The stock camshafts give full power at like 5.4 or something, so doing 6000 is, you know, what you guys do. I do fucking 7 or 8, so, but this is for you guys. This engine has naturally aspirated NA 100 horsepower at 6000 RPM. If we put the big turbo on, because we need 400 horsepower, right? Three bars. Then it's gonna look like this red line here. If you're fucking lucky, you have boost at fucking 4000 RPM, right? This is a 604, by the way. OM604, four cylinder, 2.2 liter, naturally aspirated diesel engine. So, this little bad boy, the OM604, will give you 400 horsepower at 300, uh, three bars. But, the graph will not be that fucking good, right? Can't do anything about that, can't we? Can we? Yes, we can. We can put a smaller turbo on and we can have boost early and we can do 300 horsepower. But you know, I can dress in a skirt as well, but I don't do that. So, what we do is that we up our naturally aspirated power to 200 horsepower. And how the fuck do we do that? Because the turbo, it doesn't know if your engine is naturally aspirated or boosted or what the fuck it is. It only sits on your manifold and sees the exhaust gases coming out. 200 horsepower is more exhaust gases coming out. It's simple fucking logic, right? So we up our naturally aspirated power to 200 horsepower. Now this engine is way more powerful than an OM606 because the OM606 with a good pump, if you're lucky, has 150 horsepower. This little four cylinder has 200. And if we look at the graph here for the bigger power, we also see that the red, the turbo, kicks in way, way sooner. And this is what I mean that real life is actually better than the graph. This will be even better in real life. The same turbo on the same engine in the same car. And the difference is massive. So how do we get the natural aspirated power up to 200 horsepower. Bigger valves, 
insanely aggressive camshafts, rev like a lunatic, ported head. No, it's still 6000 RPM here, you know? So it's not that. It's a supercharger. Welcome to the world of twin charge. So you supercharge your fucking own 604 and you have a very small, compact, light, fairly engine that will perform better than your neighbor's fucking own 606. Way better. Will also take less fuel. Less fuel is good. And that's why the fucking supercharger line is green. Because this is the green alternative. So, supercharger. Put the supercharger, boost one bar, because that's what they say here. Here. One bar. That will give you 200 horsepower. And then you have your turbo. And you boost your three bars. And you have 400 horsepower. This is, my friends, what we're gonna do. Nothing else. Crap that VNT bullshit, you know? You, you can rev to like, what the fuck here? And then it just chokes and dies and it's, everything is just <laughs> VNT motherfuckers. So throw that fucking VNT turbo as far as you can and you boost your fucking car. And now, because of all my friends that are requesting shit, I did this to 6,000 RPMs for you guys. I did it to 400 horsepower for you guys, because I want to do this. I want to do this graph on a 606, you know? And 600, 650 horsepower, 7,000 RPM, something that's fun and exciting to drive. But this is for you guys. You guys that has a, a Land Rover. This is the fucking best engine you can ever put in a Landy. Right? A short wheelbase Landy 90. Oh. It gets your heart pounding, huh? doesn't it? Whew. G Wagon? No, they're sold with a 606. You're fucking gonna use a 606. Right? But the landy guys, or the jeep guys, this is great. So, I mean, I've shown this fucking picture for you now for 25 minutes. So if you don't get it, you will never get it. Everything is about boost. But we sometimes we have to trick the boost a little bit. Turbo is fun. Turbo is very, very efficient, but sometimes it takes a little while to get started. And we can fix that by twin charging. And soon, in a store close to you, there will be a complete twin charge kit for sale. Maybe, right? So, that's all for today. See you in three days.